This is Failing Justice. Hey guys, um, welcome to the Failing Justice podcast. I am your host, as always, Justin Carlson. Thanks for listening into this episode. We are in downtown Dallas at the Hello Studios, where we record the Failing Justice podcast, and I want to thank you all for joining in. Um, a little bit of quick news uh, just at the, the top of the show before I get started. I want everybody to pray for the uh, folks over in Maui, um, over in Hawaii. I, I've been kind of keeping up with this a little bit. So as of today, it says that 100 are dead. The, the death count is up to 100 with only 25% of the burn area searched. Um, and, you know, you can just look at that and say, hey, you know, there's there's going to probably be more to come. So just pray for those guys over there. And also, if you want to donate, um, I want to direct you guys. I'm not affiliated with them, um, but I know it's uh, in good hands. Uh, MercuryOne.org. Uh, MercuryOne.org. Because I don't trust the federal government whatsoever. Um and Mercury One does a lot of disaster relief funding, and it was founded by good people who do the right thing. It was actually founded by Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck is a, um, he's kind of like a um, talk radio podcast uh, hero of mine. i um, been listening to him for a long, long time, and Glenn Beck founded Mercury One, and so you can go over to Mercury One and donate. Um, Joe Biden says that he's going, he's vows to give them $700. Um each family seven hundred dollars, which kind of baffles me a little bit, because when you think about um, the the twenty five billion dollars that we have given to Ukraine for their war, um, you know, it's just kind of sad that we've had this issue, this disaster right here on American soil, and you know, we can't, we can only give seven hundred dollars, you know, per family. Um, and, and so that's really sad to me, uh, but mercury org, you can head over there and donate. So, um, moving along my next topic here, um, this comes out of, uh, Marion County, uh, Kansas. Okay. Um, this is kind of a crazy story. I've been keeping up with this for the last several days and this is just a, um, this is crazy. I mean, this is crazy. It's made national headlines. People in other countries have picked this up. So the Marion County Record, um, it is a small little newspaper publication uh, there in Marion County, Kansas. And um, they just had their property raided on Friday, uh, which is nuts. Um, it, The reason they had their property raided was because um, there was a victim by the name of Carrie Newall. Carrie Newall is a business owner, restaurant owner there in town. She was trying to obtain a liquor license uh, to be able to sell liquor at her restaurant. And um, a source, an anonymous source or a source had sent some information to the Marion County Record and um, saying that she had her license revoked in 2008 because of a DWI charge that she had. Well, um, kind of moving along a little bit, um, the uh, source sent that in to the record, and the record actually questioned um, the validity of the source, uh, kind of how they obtained it, so they reported that to the police. Um, they, they, the, 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 the publication reported it to the police and said, Hey, we're not going to post this story because this is kind of questionable. Well, so then next thing you know, they come in and they raid, they, they raid the, the, the freaking publication. They raid their office. They take computers, they take, um, you know, laptops, desktops, they take recorders, they take papers, they take all this stuff. Um, claiming that the um, information was claim uh, was obtained illegally. Um, so here here's what you got here. I'm gonna read this. Um, I want to read this uh, this post here from this news article. 
But it says, and, and hold on to your seat because it gets kind of crazy. Um, let me see here. So here's the deal. It says that the... Uh, Says the police department claimed the raid was carried out because they had concerns of identity theft after the newspaper obtained evidence of possible liquor license violation. But the news operation was sure the raid was due to their investigation to Gideon Cody. Now, Gideon Cody is the police chief there at the uh, police department, uh, Marion County Police Department. So he became the chief of Marion County Police Department in late April after leaving the Kansas City Police amid allegations of sexual misconduct. Cody took the job after retiring as captain and work where he worked for 24 years. The Marion County record received an outpouring of calls, the publisher claimed, um, saying that Cody had uh, retired from his last police post to avoid demotion over sexual misconduct allegations. Uh, Meyer said that his, the newspaper was contacted by Cody's, the police chief's former colleagues, and um, they made said that he had claims of uh, sexual misconduct, but the six-plus anonymous sources ultimately never went on the record, and reporters could not obtain Cody's personnel file. So Kansas City police have refused to reveal whether Cody was accused of sexual misconduct uh, working in their force. Uh, Meyer said the identity of the source um, were on the computer servers that were actually seized um, by the police chief's team. Now, he says, I may be paranoid that this has anything to do with it, but the people, uh, but when people come and seize your computer, they tend to be, uh, you tend to be a little paranoid. Um, he said that they had not yet published the story because they had not completed their investigation, so they didn't want to go on record and, and put anything out there just yet. Um, the police chief didn't know who the source was, but apparently he does now. Um, Meyer also said that this is the type of stuff that Vladimir Putin does, uh, that of a third world country. It says the raid occurred after a leaked document uh, about a local uh, restaurant owner, Carrie Newell, uh, again, the lady that um, had the, uh, apparently didn't have a driver's license. She was trying to get the uh, liquor license. So it said the, um, the raid occurred after the, the leaked documents about the uh, restaurant owner, Carrie Newell, um, that um, she couldn't get her liquor license, and it was handed to the newspaper. He said Meyer didn't publish that story about Newell because he questioned the source and instead he told the cops about the information. So the publisher went to the cops and said, hey, I got this questionable um, information in our inbox. It's about Carrie Newell. Um, we're not going to post a story because, you know, we don't, you know, we don't know how it was obtained, but we wanted to go ahead and let you guys know about it. So, uh, Newell then accused the weekly newspaper of uh, illegally obtaining her personal data, which prompted the search at the publication. So, the newspaper goes and reports to the police, hey, we got this about this lady. Um, we're not going to post it because we question the validity or we question how it was obtained. Now, the paper's also doing an investigation into the police chief about his sexual misconduct allegations from his prior police agency. So the police department then says, hey, let's go uh, raid this place because um, Newell, Carrie Newell, is claiming that uh, her information was uh, obtained illegally by the newspaper. So the publisher told um, the Kansas City Star, said, we sent them a note saying that the source had given us a file that we thought had suspicion, suspicious origins. We checked it out to verify that it actually was accurate, but we're not planning to do any, anything with it. Their response was the typical fashion of a bully, is what he says. Instead of asking a question um, or getting material, they came with an atomic flash water to seize our equipment and apparently tried to put us out of business. Okay, so here's the story gets crazier. Eric... Meyer, the publisher, lived with his 98-year-old mother. They raided the house last Friday on the 11th. Her, the 98-year-old mother was there, seemingly in good health. Um, nothing was really wrong with her at the time. And so the very next day, 
the very next day, Joan died. This is what it says. It says, before Joan died, she told the Wichita Eagle about the raids. These are Hitler tactics, and something has to be done. The next day, around 1.30, Eric Meyer woke up his mother to offer her breakfast, but she could not stomach it. Eric said, right in the middle of that sentence, she passed away. And th- and and that's crazy. Um, actually, let's watch this video. This is this is Eric Meyer right here um, having a news interview. I want you guys to watch this for just a second. And then we'll follow this up with some video from um, the actual raid. Check it out. This is Marion County Record publisher Eric Meyer answering a phone call from the state of New York. The phones at the Marion County Record have been ringing off the hook from people around the country who are supporting them after this raid. Headlines have circled the globe after police raided the Marion County Records newsroom, as well as Meyer's home, a raid Meyer calls unprecedented. He says he's in almost constant communication with his legal team to figure out what kind of litigation they should pursue, if any. Every attorney we've talked to says it. Every person who's read about this story says it. And there's no one, literally no one, who has said it was proper to execute this search warrant. And if there is, let them call me up and tell me. This all stems from an incident where reporters for the record were kicked out of an event hosted by Carrie's Kitchen, owned by Carrie Newell. Reporters later discovered Newell had a suspended driver's license and a DUI, as she was trying to obtain a liquor license for her business. Meyer insists record reporters obtain the information through completely legal channels. We not only did not do anything le- illegal, we reported everything we did, and we would have gladly shared almost anything that we gathered with the police if they had asked, instead of wanting to come knock, down, knock our doors down and throw us out and seize our equipment. So why did they want to seize our equipment? The Marion Police Department insists it's doing its job in investigating potential criminal activity saying in a statement while the law does protect newsrooms from most searches, that's not the case when journalists themselves have committed a crime. Meyer is also dealing with the death of his 98-year-old mother, Joan, co-owner of the paper, who he says died due to the stress of the raid. You know, they're going to go visit a 98-year-old woman and, on, and make the last day of her life total hell, which I will never forgive these people for doing that. And if they aren't held accountable by the people of the city of Marion. I will never forgive the people of the city of Marion. Throughout this hardship, Meyer says he's grateful for the support the paper is receiving. The outpouring of support and all the different interviews that I've done and all the different other things I've got to do to get the paper put together are probably a blessing in a in a very strange way. Also, the police department uh, made this post on their Facebook page um, claiming that uh, they can't talk about the investigation because you know it's 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 a it's a private investigation and you know they don't want to talk about it. But here's another thing, something else that you find out about when digging into this pretty deep. Um, Carrie Newell she apparently hosted a meet and greet with U.S. Congressman Jake LaTurner in District uh, 70, Kansas Rep. Scott Hill on August 1st. And guess who posted a picture of that meet and greet with a thank you with a thank you to Carrie and her team. The police department. The police chief and the police department made a post about the meet and greet with the congressman. This was before the raid. So you one has to sit here and think and say, okay, um This lady has connections with congressmen. She's obviously somebody in the city who is important. And she holds this meet and greet at her, uh, one of her coffee houses. The, the sheriff is there. Um, the police chief, um, county, county commissioners, city council members, all these people are present for this, um, for, for this, uh, little meet and greet. And, Next thing you know, reporters for the Marion County Record show up. Okay, so the Marion County Record show up, and they're wanting to do a story on on the piece. Well, they, Carrie Newell and her team, kick them out. They wouldn't let them come in and, and, and uh, do a piece, do a story. So you can look at this situation the totality of the circumstances, and this is blown up. If you go over to um, 
the Marion County uh, police website, and you can look at the post that they made on there defending their actions about their raid. But you have somebody who's obviously connected to the city, and um, she's trying to obtain a liquor license. The newspaper finds out about it, tells the police, "Hey, we're not going to do this, but this is this is, you know, this is what was sent to us." And then she claims that the newspaper obtained it illegally, although they reported it. But at the same time, the newspaper, the Marion County Record, is trying to uh, do an investigation on the police chief and any of his misconduct from his prior agency of uh, uh, sexual misconduct. So then suddenly, they go and raid the Marion County Record. I mean, that is, a, that is an utter violation of, of, of everything. The Constitution, the moral code. And that's just, what kind of world are we living in these days? What kind of country do we live in where you, where's freedom of press anymore? How are they even gonna gonna report anything when the police department's gonna go raid them because they have dirt on the police department? And this is go man, this is going on all over our country, and it's just sickening, and it, and it and it's and it's downright frustrating too. I mean, you you heard what Mister Meyer said on the video. I mean, I'd be pissed off, and his mom died. They raided. On Friday, and his mom, his 98-year-old mom died on Saturday because because of everything that was going on. That's just absolute sickening. And then the guys get on there, then the police department gets on there and totally defends their actions on what they're doing. The, the, the justice system that's being questioned will be vindicated. What, what justice system is there anymore? Does the justice system even exist? Because this is, I mean, this is just downright terrible what happened to these people. And it's happening more and more across the country. I mean, free speech is out the window. Doesn't even really exist anymore. And you know there's a problem whenever they start, when the police, when the local police department comes and raids the local newspaper because of, something that they had possession of. So the police chief now has access to all the information and the anonymous sources that were reporting to the Marion County record on his sexual misconduct from his previous agency. He now has access to that. What kind of compromised investigation is is that? I want to know what you guys think. Um, Talk about it in the comments on this video. Absolutely unreal, sickening. You guys go over there and take a look at all that. You can you can dig some of this stuff up. Um, I just kind of wanted to 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 hit the highlights with it. This sounds like some for anybody that's been following me and all the things that I've dealt with. I mean, this is like some Palestine, Texas type stuff. All right, guys. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have heard um, this song from this guy, but. It's really good. Um, it's 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 a really interesting song. Um, I want to play it real quick. I want to play this song and then and then we'll talk about it. Let's let's go ahead and watch this video real quick. Well, I've been selling my soul, working all day, overtime hours for bullshit pay, so I can sit out here and waste my life away. Drag back home and drown my troubles away It's a damn shame What the world's gotten to For people like me People like you Wish I could just wake up And it not be true But it is Oh it is Living in the new world With an old soul These rich men know the rich men Pile 
politicians look out for miners and not just miners on an island somewhere lord we got folks in the street ain't got nothing to eat and the whole beast milking welfare well, god if you're five foot three and you're 300 pounds taxes ought not to pay for your bags of fudge rounds so that's oliver anthony um his real name is actually Chris uh, Christopher Anthony, and he lives in Farmville, Virginia. And um, just a regular old guy, man, loves to sing, uh, loves to record. And man, they, I, I've seen this. Um, a lot of people talked about it. I just haven't had the opportunity to talk about it. I wanted to share it with my listeners um, because this is, I mean, they just don't make music like that anymore. Um. You know, it says, I've been selling my soul, working all day, overtime hours for bullshit pay. So I can sit out here and waste my life away, drag back home and drown my troubles away. It says, uh, it's a damn shame what the world's gotten to for people like me and people like you. Living in a new world with an old soul. The rich men north of Richmond. What he's talking about, he's talking about politics, politicians uh, in D.C. And actually what he says was, um, he said in a re- uh, recently shared introduction video that he sits pretty dead s- center in the aisle of the politics. But he says both sides serve the same master, and the master is not someone, any of the good people of this country, um, that it's not good for any of the good people of this country. And he's right. Uh, man, all those guys, and and I, I said it last episode, and I'll say it over and over again. You know, if if our leaders, I use that term loosely, if our leaders in D.C. are just doing what they want to do. Um, I mean, I, I talked about it earlier. Joe Biden's going to give $700 to the people of Maui. I mean... <laughs> This song is so powerful. I mean, it kind of it kind of hits, kind of hits hits pretty hard, man. Because that's just the, that's just the, the 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 raw truth. I think this song people can relate to this simply because it's, I mean, it's raw, it's relatable um, to the average U.S. citizen, like I mean, like us, like me. And um, I just wanted to share that with you guys, so that way. Um, uh, again, if you want to, if you want to look it up, Oliver Anthony, it's called the Rich uh, Richmond North of Richmond. It's on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube. You can just Google it and find it anywhere. Hey guys, let's talk about this. Is something that I've been wanting to talk about for a while is First Amendment auditors. Um, now, if you guys don't know what that is, it's men and women who go to public places like all these different municipalities and townships and counties. Um, They'll go with their camera and they'll just start filming the building. Now, um, the reason for it is they, they are looking to see how the police handle the encounters. Now, some of these people are a little over the top. Um, they're just straight looking for a fight. And then there's other ones. I, I have a, I have um, one that's my favorite. Um, his name is Sean Paul Reyes. He's with Long Island Audit um, Inc. And he's out of New Jersey. And he's a pretty respectable guy. Um, but what, that's what he does. He goes all around this country. And he um, takes his cameras and he goes to public places. And he just films. He doesn't really say anything at all. He doesn't approach people. Um, He's just quiet and he films. Um, And then what always happens is they call the police on him. Whoever's, like say he goes to a DMV um, or a county clerk's office or, you know, a municipal court building, people call the police. And the police come out and... um, Some of the encounters are good and some of them are not. And what I don't understand 
Uh, let me actually, what I want to do, I want to play this video for you guys. I want y'all to watch this. Um, so this is Sergeant Brian Fahey of the Connecticut State Police. And this is Sean Paul Reyes, the First Amendment auditor that's in the video. And um, this is actually his second encounter with uh, Sergeant Brian Fahey. And he, uh, you know, just watch the video and then we'll talk about it. Let's play it. It's Sergeant Brian Fahey in the flesh. There he is. Look at him. In the flesh. He's here. Hi, sir. How are you? Hey, how are you? You already told me you didn't have anything here. Oh, today. yeah. I just got to do some FOIA requests and things some like what? that. A FOIA request for your body camera footage and Sergeant uh, Brian Fahey's uh, disciplinary record. You can have to send it in, in, in writing. Yeah. Who's the guy behind you? That you I have to conduct, I have to conduct uh, business here, Sergeant. Sir, what can we do for you? Come on in. Oh, you're yeah, the sergeant of pistol, pistol permits, aren't you? Come on. In. Go ahead, come on in, sir. sir. Excuse me, sir. You have to get sir. out of the way. Sir, Excuse I know. Me, sir. I know your inclination is wanting to assault me, Excuse sergeant. Me, sir. Stop pushing me. I'm trying to get in. I'm trying you to get in the building. You can't the building. You have no business. Here. I do have business here. Stop acting like a like a like a savage. What are you Back doing? Before I arrest you. The security camera footage clearly shows Sergeant Brian Fahey violently take my camera from my possession stopping it from recording i want you all to take a moment and think about what would happen if one of us did this to a law enforcement officer back up take my phone again you. i have other back up before you. i arrest you that's her up. body camera's on that's fine get you away like from the do door you don't need to block camera. the door don't block the door no one's scared of don't, you sergeant i didn't say you were don't block the door don't block the door don't block the door just don't block the door don't block the door yeah yeah, I'm not scared of you. Don't lock the door. Do what you gotta do. Don't do lock the door. Do. do what you gotta do, because I'm not scared of you, Sergeant. I'm allowed to come into this building. Correct. Thank you. Sergeant Brian Fahey just took my camera yet again. The coward that he is. He just took my camera yet again and stopped it from recording. But the officer that talked to us in the... All right, so as you can see, that was that was terrible. Um, Sean goes up to the uh, state building. He wants to go in there and do an open records request, FOIA request, and um, he wants to get some body cam footage. And that's Sergeant Brian Fahey, a sergeant with the Connecticut State Police, just acts a total fool. Ends up taking Sean's phone, cutting it off, uh, slamming the door on Sean, and Sean Sean bites back, man. He bites back. Um, and some of you watching that and listening to this, you may have um, different opinions on these First Amendment auditors. Now, here's my take on it. They exist, okay? Um, and I promise you, if you look it up and, and, and do any kind of research and look on YouTube... Sean Paul Reyes is the most chill, respectful First Amendment auditor out there. Um, he goes out there, he makes his videos, he makes money doing it, he has a large following. Um, and that's just what he does. Okay? Right, wrong, indifferent, whether you like it, whether you don't like it, that's what he does. And so he goes up here, and what I don't understand, this is... <laughs> This is what is wrong with the police in this country. This guy knows, or should know, if he didn't identify what Sean was doing, he's a complete idiot. But he should have known what Sean was doing. And he can't be denied access to a public building. Um, they, it, I'm going to post a link to this in my show notes. Um, so when you guys download this podcast, um, I'll put the, the, the link to that YouTube uh, video in there, and you can watch the whole thing because that's just a small little portion of it. But if you go and watch the whole thing, they actually end up letting him in the building um, because that is his right. Sean has the right to go be in a public place and film in a public place. A lot of people say, oh, well, you can't film me without permission. That's not true. 
I can walk out here on a public sidewalk. I can walk here, walk out here on, you know, any of the the public property of the city of Dallas. I can go to the city of Dallas Police Department, any of their substations, and I can film all day long. I can walk in the wa- in the lobby, and I can film all day long. It's allowed. You're allowed to do it. And these guys exist, and the cops always fail. As you can see, Sergeant Brian Fahey completely fails at his response to dealing with uh, Sean. And it's it's totally embarrassing. It's embarrassing on the profession of law enforcement. Um, it's embarrassing for, the, for that particular agency, for the Connecticut State Police. It's embarrassing to Mr. Fahey that he got so upset that he let some stranger with a with a cell phone camera get under his skin so much that he had to go physical and that just blows my mind because there's hunt if you if you follow uh, Sean's channel um I'm over here promoting Sean <laughs> but if you go follow his channel that's all he does he has hundreds of these videos and very few times do the police show up and say hey tells the caller say look listen he he has the right to be here he can record you know just continue doing your duties move on with your life and sean will leave because he will the reactions that sean's sean gets are the reactions that get him all the views um and all the likes and all this all the uh, subscribers because these cops are out here acting like pure idiots and what I don't if you watch all these videos, they they get caught. Like ninety five percent of them get caught up in the middle because they have an ego. They get pissed off because there's nothing they can do. They have a camera in their face, and they know that there's truly nothing that they can do. But they still try to exercise their authority. They still try to exercise their ego anyway. And um, gosh, cops! If there's any cops listening to me right now. Don't fall into this trap. Don't be an idiot because of your ego. Understand that there is a constitution. In the constitution, you have to enforce it. You have to abide by it. And citizens that are out here doing these things, they are allowed to do some of these things, and your ego is going to get you in trouble going to make you look stupid it's going to make the profession look stupid and um i think it's actually pretty cool uh sean does a lot of training with police departments he he goes across the country and um, police departments will let him come in and and they kind of do co-training to to for for these cops to understand look that's a constitutionally protected activity they have the right to film in public places and it doesn't matter who you are, if you're in a public place, you you can be filmed all day long. And so Sean does that training, uh, and I think it's pretty cool um, that he does do it. And but but my point is this: I wanted to, you know, I don't know what anybody thinks of these First Amendment honors. Some of them are just tacky, man. Some of them are just downright tacky, uh, super aggressive, um, and just total assholes. And they kind of deserve what they get, but. You know, guys like Sean, um, I think his message, you know, is 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 pretty clear. And what I don't understand is why the police keep falling into those traps. So again, if you're a cop and you're listening to this right now, don't do that, man. Don't don't fall into that trap. Um, if you end up running into that, because, and not even just with First Amendment, you know, auditors, like, just period. Uh, police officers have have such a problem with with their ego. You go back to the, the Marion County record incident, like that police chief. I don't care how you try to spin that. I don't think he's going to be able to spin it in any kind of way that's going to look good on him. But it's extremely clear that he knew that the paper was probing him, and so he's going to exercise his authority and his power, and he's going to go get what he wants. So not just when it comes to First Amendment protected activities such as, you know, recording. Guys, this, there is a constitution for a reason because those rights are afforded to the people of this country. And you got to check your ego. You got to check your ego or you're going to end up getting 
getting yourself hurt, getting killed, getting somebody else hurt, getting somebody else killed, you're going to end up in prison. Don't be stupid. Pay attention to what you're doing. Well, guys, that is all I've got for this episode of the Failing Justice podcast. Um, again, tune in to us uh, each week. Um, we're going to be coming at you weekly. And um, I appreciate all the support that you guys have given me. And um, give us a, a follow, a like, and subscribe. Share to your people and let them know that we're out here. See ya. This is Failing Justice.